Happy Sabbath to all. Welcome to our sermon series where we are talking about walking in the spirit. Before we start, I just want to say happy Sabbath to everyone. Thank you for joining us. I have truly been blessed by this message. I pray that we all can get our Bibles. So grab your Bibles or if you have a smartphone, you want to use the Bible app. Um, and we're going to be going to Romans 8 today. And I've been truly blessed by this message, and I pray that you can be blessed too. So let us kneel for prayer, and let us open the Bibles together and all receive a blessing. Father in heaven, as we come to open up your word, I pray that you could fill me with your Holy Spirit, fill me with your wisdom, fill me with your love. I have been blessed by this message, and I pray that I can continue to be blessed by it. And everyone who hear, hears this, can be blessed too. So speak through me, Father, and just fill all of our minds and hearts with just understanding right now so we can draw closer to you and we can surrender our lives to Jesus and walk with you day by day. Bless this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So overall, Romans is 8 is a chapter of victory, all right? You go to 9, and verse 9 says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if, if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. What a beautiful promise this is, that even though we may be going through different challenges in our life, the spirit of God is what dwells in us and is what gives us life and victory. Christ is our righteousness. When we look at this, we, we talk about this experience that we're going through. And this is talk about, talking about uh, the transforming power of God in our life. Brothers and sisters, I know that this is something that I want to experience. Growing in Christ day by day, walking in the Spirit, and having God transform me. This is the promise that God has given us. And this is what Jesus has done at the cross. At the cross, Jesus not only died for our sins so that we could be forgiven, but also he sent his Holy Spirit after the resurrection so that we can abide in him and we can have victory also. Isn't that a promise that we all look forward to, brothers and sisters? I want us all to turn to 1 Corinthians 3.16. When we turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians 3.16, this gives us an understanding of what we are, who we are, and what is happening in our bodies. It says in 1 Corinthians 3.16, do you not know that ye, ye, you are the temple of God and that the, the spirit of God dwells in you? Do you not know that you are the temple of God? Amen. And that the spirit of God dwells in you. So this is so powerful because now we are seeing that the Spirit of God is dwelling inside of us. What a beautiful promise that is, that the Spirit of God is actually dwelling inside of us, okay? And, and, and then let's turn to Colossians 1.27. Colossians 1.27. So Colossians 1.27 it reads, to them, God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So if Christ is already in us. What does it take? What does it take to be victorious? It's one word, surrender, 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 surrender. We must surrender to God. Every single day when we wake up, every single day we get on our knees and we, we put our face to the ground and we surrender our lives to God and we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior every day asking God to dwell inside of us, to live inside of us, and to give 
us the power of his Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, I don't know what you have been going through in your life. I don't know what you may have been struggling with. I don't know what challenges you have been facing. But the key to our victory, the key to our walk with God is a total surrender to the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The, so, the total surrender of the conviction of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Walking with the Spirit, listening to the Spirit, and, and abiding in the Spirit, abiding in Jesus. We need to understand that our bodies is the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we think about God being so far away. We think about Jesus being so far away. We think about Jesus being in the heavenly sanctuary, interceding for us. But also, our bodies is the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit, where we can abide in Christ moment by moment every day and have victory because Christ is our righteousness. Let's turn to 1 uh, Corinthians 6, and let's look at verse 19. 1 Corinthians 6, and let's look at verse 19. So 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So why is this important? This is letting us know that we were bought with a price. We were purchased by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And this is so significant to our walk with God. Because then when we think about our bodies being the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit, we, we now are convicted and we are empowered by Christ to align our wills with the will of God. That's how you know that you are walking in the Spirit where your will, you're handing over your will, you're yielding your will, you're yielding your, your thoughts, your actions, your motives, your everything to Christ. And aligning everything that you do, every choice that you make in your life to the will of God and according to the Word of God. What a beautiful thing. Because we need to really understand that Jesus redeemed us we are redeemed, and, and we have so much of these beautiful promises in the Bible to how Jesus redeemed us. And because he redeemed us, he wants to live with us, abide with us, and give us victory in this life so that we can be, be saved. We can um, also have win more to the kingdom of heaven. And we can have that victorious life, that life of holiness. So let's, let's go and look at just how beautiful Jesus redeemed us. Let's go to Isaiah 43. Because we wonder why are we yielding our lives to the Holy Spirit? And it's because we are redeemed. We are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. If we read in Isaiah 43, it's, it says, But now, thus said the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, so God, he created you, he formed you. You are special to him. You are special to God. Fear not. So we're not to, supposed to have fear. Why? For I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. So when we look at this part where it says redeemed, right? This is, this is very important because this is, in the Hebrew, this is Ga'al. And this is, this is kinsman. And, and a kinsman, it's so important because a kinsman is it's like the redeemer. It's like you're redeeming your family. There's so many things when it comes to the Hebrew culture that a kins, kinsman was allowed to do. They was able to redeem when it came to a cost, when it came to price, when it came to from by death. It was so significant. We think about Ruth, we think about Boaz, we think about the kinsman redeemer, right? And we might wonder why. Why would, would Jesus, why would it be so significant for Jesus to redeem us? Now we turn to Genesis 1.26. When you turn to Genesis 1.26, this is why God is redeeming us. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. 
We are made in the image of God. We are kins to the, to, we are God's children. We are God's family. And that's why he sent Jesus to redeem us because he wanted to redeem his family and have victory, victory and have communion with us so that we could abide in his love forever. God has a plan for your life. God has something special for your life. No matter what you may be going through right now, these challenges that you may be facing today, the things that break your heart today, the, the things that cause you pain, this was not in God's initial plan. God's initial plan was for us to abide in his love. And this is so important for us to know. When God came to redeem us, he was doing something that he was responsible for. We are Jesus' family. We are Jesus' kids. We are the apple of his eye. And he loves you so much that he did everything in his power, even going to the cross, to redeem you. So this is why we choose to abide in his love, abide in his spirit, because Jesus died for us, and we are Jesus' responsibility, okay? So now we let's go to John 3.16. We, we, we are looking at why, all right? So if we look at John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So God, we were created in God's image. And the reason why this is so significant is because without God, we will never experience, without a relationship with God, we would never be able to experience the true happiness and peace that God intended for us in our life. We may experience happiness and peace through our own definition, but when it comes to the fullness of the gospel, the fullness of the peace, the fullness of the salvation, the fullness of walking with God, that can only be accomplished through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Walking with him, talking to him, surrendering our life to him daily, so he could abide in us and activate that Holy Spirit power in us and that we can in, enjoy the fruits of the Spirit. This is so important. I was canvassing and I was canvassing today and I met this, this guy, his brother, his name is Zach. And he was playing some music in his car and I was walking the other direction. But I felt the calling to walk back towards him and speak to him about Jesus and the books that I had. So I started to speak to him and he says, hey, no disrespect, but I'm not religious. I'm not religious. So, all right, no problem, brother. And I asked him, hey, um, I asked, I told him what I was doing and I shared with him some of the books. And he said, it's okay, you know, I don't want the book. I said, hey, are you Christian? He's like, yeah, I grew up Christian, but I'm not Christian anymore. And then we started talking about uh, life and I started sharing my testimony with him and sharing like how these books have really been a blessing to my life. And then he told me that he actually plays wheelchair basketball and uh, he didn't have one of his legs. So he has to work, walk in a wheelchair. Sometimes he walks, but he can't because one of his legs, you know, it, it's, it's not as easy. We actually spent an hour talking about God and God's love. And he had so many questions about the great controversy and why is there so much evil in this world and why is there so much sin? And you see humans messing up this world. And I was patient with him. I stayed there. I listened to him. And I also acknowledged all the points that he was making as valid from his perspective. But then I realized in that moment that the Holy Spirit was giving me different scriptures. Hebrews 4.16, uh, giving uh, the word of God is uh, sharper than a two-edged sword, giving me so many different scriptures. Um, we were made in God's image. Genesis 1.26, for God so loved the world that he only, that he sent his only begotten son. All these scriptures were coming to my mind to share it with him. And he, he was, and I was talking about the great controversy in God's love. And it was amazing because, you know, he was nodding his head and he was saying, you know, that makes sense. So then I opened up the book to him, Steps to Christ, and I showed him the chapter 11, which is privilege of prayer. That it says, prayer is like opening the heart of God to a friend, not for, uh, for, not for him to know who we are, but for 
us to be able to connect with him. Uh, prayer does not bring God down to us, but brings us up to him. And he was like, wow, yeah, that's powerful. So I told him, start with this book. This is a step-by-step -step guide that shows you how to have that personal relationship with Jesus. By the end of the conversation, after about an hour, he was like, you know what? Um, I may not just change my life right away, but I'm going to give this a thought. I'm going to read this book. I said, amen, praise God. You know, and it was just a blessing to meet him. And I was, the, the main core about our conversation, not only were we talking about the love of God, but it was a main point that we spoke about. God did not just come in the form of Jesus and, 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 and God and Jesus living through humanity, humanity by the power of the Holy Spirit to die for our sins. Not just that, but to also give us the transforming power of the Holy Spirit to abide in us day by day to be transformed into his image and to go back to that original plan that God had in Genesis 1 and 2. And that is to abide with us. That is to uh, be in our, in our midst and for us to be in his love because we are his children and he loves us. And if you had a kid, would you not want to be around your kid and to love them and to enjoy them and to walk with them and to speak with them and to have memories like that. If you think about God's love for us, we can't even fathom. We will take eternity trying to realize how much God loves for us. So when it talks about surrendering to God, we are surrendering to a loving God. We are surrendering to love. That's what we are. And love is causing us to surrender to God. Okay. And there's so many blessings that come with that because we think about the resurrection, the same power and the same Holy Spirit power that resurrected Jesus is resurrecting us. All right. Let's turn to, um, let's turn to first Corinthians six, 14, first Corinthians six, 14. And it says, and God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. God, when we were baptized and we, we were raised up, it was, it was as if we went and we died to the old self and now we're being baptized and, and now we're being raised up. But now, but now we walk in the spirit and it's the spirit, it's the Christ who does it through us. So we're not keeping our eyes on ourselves at, after this point. We're not keeping our eyes on the capacity of what we could do, but we're putting our full focus by surrendering and we're keeping our eyes on Jesus. That's how we are walking in victory, all right? Now, let's go to 2 Corinthians 4.14. 2 Corinthians 4.14. Because we have this promise that we will not face the second death. We will not be dead, but we are going to experience eternal life with Jesus Christ our Lord. It says, no, knowing that he who raised up the Lord will also raise us up with Jesus. And will present us with you for all things for your sakes, that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. So this grace that God has provided for us is the blessing that we are going to experience through Jesus Christ every single day. This grace, this grace, because we are saved by grace. Now let's go to Philippians 3, 21. We, we are talking about why we are surrendering to God because of all these blessings that he has done for us and he created us, we're his. Philippians 3, 21, it says, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself we are going to be transformed we are not surrendering for to god for no reason or surrendering like robots we are surrendering because he is transforming us day by day into his likeness into his image and one day when we are resurrected we will look at our lowly bodies but it will be transformed into the likeness of his glorious body amen amen now we, we really need to understand it is possible to live a triumphant life, a life of victory through Christ. But there's going to be some requirements. Let's go to Acts 2.38, because this is what it's going to take for us to live that victorious life. Acts 2.38. So you turn your Bibles to Acts 2.38. 
Acts 2.38. So Acts 2.38 says, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, for the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. God is calling you right now in your life. What is separating you from the presence of God? What is separating you or stopping you from yielding your full will to God? What in your life do you need to repent of? Repent. Repent and come to God so he could empower you with the Holy Spirit to walk with him day by day. Repent of your sins. Repent and come to God. And God is going to empower you and, and, to, and to give you the strength to overcome. And it's, all, and it's all based on love. Let's go to John. Let's go to John 16, 3. John 16, 3. Because we are talking about why do we surrender? Why do we give our lives to God? Why do we walk in the Spirit? John 16, 3. So John 16, 3, it says, And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. Oh, John 16, 13. And then it says, However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. So it says, however, when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you. So this is, this is the power. When we surrender to God, we are, we are surrendering to, the, to Jesus. Jesus Christ is our righteousness. Jesus Christ is who's going to do this through us. But we get on our, our knees. We surrender to God day by day. We say, God, take me. Take me fully. Live through me. Empower me. Give me the power to overcome. Give me the power to walk with you. And when we do this, the Holy Spirit is going to start to guide us day by day in our lives. This is life-changing, brothers and sisters. The Holy Spirit will guide you day by day so that you can walk that triumphant, victorious life through Jesus. We have to claim this promise to know that we are hares. We are hares and uh, we are hares to the throne, to the kingdom of God. Jesus has promised you victory already. Jesus died at the cross for your sins. In Jesus, you have a mansion in heaven. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. So every single day we surrender and yield our will to God. Why? Because it's through love. It's all about the fact that we, he loved us first and we are surrendering to love. Okay? Let's go to Ephesians, Ephesians 3.16. Because we want to talk about now the real reason deeply why we surrender. And it's all because of love. It's not for no other reason but love. It's for no other reason but love. So we go to Ephesians 3.16. And this is one of my favorite scriptures. It says, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with the might through his spirit in the inner man. All right? He's going to strengthen you and give you spirit, give you the spirit inside you and give you strength inside you to live a victorious life. God is promising you this. All we have to do is surrender to God. Surrender our life to God. And say to God, God, I don't want any more of me. I want all of you. Now it says that Christ may dwell in your hearts. Now you surrender to God. What happens? Christ will dwell in your heart through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love. This is all because of love, brothers and sisters. May be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Amen? This is, this is just the most beautiful thing in the world because the love of God is going to compel us to surrender our lives to God. And when we surrender our lives to God, we get down on our knees. We say to God, take me. Take all of me. I want no more of me. I want you to fill me with you, Lord. Jesus, come inside of me. 
I want that spirit. I want the power of the Holy Spirit to be in my life. And when you do that, you start to understand that it's through faith that you start to comprehend the width, the depth, the life, the, the life that is inside you, which is the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God, the, the love that's flowing through you. And that's going to give you victory day by day to walk with God and to have victory over sin. Amen. 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 Christ is our righteousness. And he is promising us the power of victory right now to experience his peace, to experience his love, to experience his grace, to experience his transforming power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we must claim this, brothers and sisters. We must claim the power of Christ. We must claim the power of God in our life through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit within our bodies. We must claim this through faith. This is so beautiful of a promise, okay? And this is going to be revealed in our daily life. How? How will it be revealed in our daily life? Let's look at the last scripture, and I am going to read a passage from the message, and we will close with a word of prayer. This is what's going to happen when the Holy Spirit is dwelling in our life. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit. So first in verse, this is Galatians 5. So this is Galatians 5, 16, then we'll jump to 22. I say then walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Then from 16 to 21, it gives the definition of what happens when you are walking in the flesh. And it tells us clear as day, anybody walking in the flesh doing what you want to do instead of what God wants you to do or what the will of God is, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. All right. But then in verse 22, this is the promise for everyone that will say, Lord, I surrender to you. Lord, I want to give my life to you. Lord, I want to surrender to you day by day. I want to walk with you. I want to walk with you like Enoch did. I want to walk with you like Noah did. And I want to talk to you like Moses did. But most of all, I want that power of Christ in my life. And I want Christ to dwell inside of me and to me truly to walk with Jesus moment by moment through the day. This is the blessing that comes into your daily life. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. You're going to experience true love, love that comes from God. Not just love of this world, but self-sacrificing, agape love where you will be complete. Joy. You're going to get a joy that only God could give you. God will give you peace that only that you could get. Peace, long-suffering, kindness, uh, goodness, faithfulness. You'll see that you are faithful to know that our Redeemer is true. Gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh, Romans 8, with his passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. These are the blessings that's going to come to our daily life, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, I was blessed by this devotional that I was reading. And this is from the message. It's Romans 8. And it makes it a little bit more simpler. And it has truly been a blessing to my life. And I want to close with this. But if God himself has taken up residence in your life, you can hardly be thinking of yourself more than him. Anyone, of course, who has not welcomed this invisible but clearly present God, the Spirit of Christ, won't know what we are talking about. But for you who welcomed him, in whom he dwells, even through you still, even though you still experience all limitations of sin, you yourself experience life on God's terms. It stands to reason, doesn't it, that if the alive and present God who raised Jesus from the dead moves into your life, he'll do the same thing in you that he did in Jesus, bringing you alive to himself. When God lives and breathes in you, and he does, and surely as he did in Jesus, you are delivered from that dead life. With his spirit living in you, your body will be as alive as Christ. That is such a beautiful promise to us brothers and sisters brothers and sisters we have this opportunity to walk with god because 
the spirit of God is dwelling inside of us. But it takes a daily surrender. It takes an hour by hour surrender. It takes a minute by minute surrender. It takes a second by second surrender. Constantly abiding in Jesus and being connected to the vine so that he could truly live through us day by day. Brothers and sisters, I don't know what's breaking your heart today. I don't know what's making you sad. I don't know if you need to forgive others. I don't know if others have hurt you. And I don't know if you have sins in your life that have hurt God. But just like Acts said, repent, be baptized. Most of all, be baptized by the Holy Spirit daily. Get down on your knees and surrender your life to God and you will have victory through faith, through Jesus, every single day, walking in the Spirit. Brothers and sisters, I don't know if you're watching at home and, and, and you are feeling the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart, telling you to repent and to come and be have a relationship again with God because this world may give you peace, but it's no peace like the peace and the joy that you will experience through a relationship and a friendship and abiding in Jesus Christ. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ as yet, I want to give you this opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ, to be baptized, and to get to know him day by day, to, get, to experience that transforming power of the Holy Spirit in your life, to experience the love of God that passes all understanding. Maybe you have been baptized already, but maybe you've noticed in your life that you have not been fully surrendered. You have not experience the true walk with God and you want to be back you want to experience that walk with God you want to say God take me I'm wholly thine take me right now Lord I want to be all yours I don't want any more of me right now do you feel the Holy Spirit calling you to do that I want to encourage you to give your life to God right now repent and say to God God forgive me of my sins cleanse me of all unrighteousness you know what he is faithful and just to do that for you so let's pray right now that God will come inside of us and we can make a decision to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit right now and to be fully surrendered to God and that we can yield our will to his will so that we could win more souls to the kingdom of heaven and most of all, we could accept the salvation that Jesus Christ has already given us as a gift. Brothers and sisters, this blessing is ours to claim now. Jesus Christ already won on the cross and not only is he forgiven you of everything in your life, but also he has given you the power to overcome and to walk with him day by day. But we need to claim that as sons and daughters of the king. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for sending your son to die on the cross. Father, we thank you for the love. We thank you for the grace. We thank you for the fact that this was a gift that we can't earn but you did it for us because you love us. So please give us the power to just come to you and surrender and give us the power through the Holy Spirit to walk with you day by day, to lose self and to keep our eyes on Jesus. Because I know as long as we, we keep our eyes on the cross, that is our victory. I pray that you could continue to uh, fill us with your Holy Spirit, forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness and allow us to walk with you day by day. Allow us to grow in Christ day by day and be transformed day by day into your character, into your image, and to have Christ dwelling in us. So as Christ is our victory, is our righteousness, Father, we thank you for everything. Come soon, Father, so we can experience heaven. We can experience your love. We can experience your peace, and we can experience that for eternity. We love you and we thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you all. Thank you uh, for joining us. And remember, you can find more messages like this at adventpreaching.com, a ministry that we have started to help encourage more people to preach the word of God, especially in a time like this. God bless you all and thank you for joining us.